uh, our current president is Donald Trump. And if you were watching his rally, raucous rally down in Melbourne, you saw him say this about what was going on over in Scandinavia. You look at what's happening in Germany. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. They took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. You look at what's happening in Brussels. You look at what's happening all over the world. Take a look at Nice. Take a look at Paris. We've allowed thousands and thousands of people into our country, and there was no way to vet those people. And so the next day, then, Donald Trump sent this out because people in Sweden were going, well, no attack here. And he tweeted this. This was his tweet. My statement as to what's happening in Sweden was in reference to a story that was broadcast on Fox News concerning immigrants in Sweden. You know, I found a quote, too. Uh, the prime minister of Sweden said Sweden has probably been naive in regard. It's been difficult for us to accept that there are people in our open society, Swedish nationals, who sympathize with killers uh, the, from the Islamic State. So they've said this in the past, they have a history, and they steamroll the fact that Nice, Germany, and Brussels are beyond reproach. They're saying, well, Sweden, where's the proof? Well, I tell you what, Tucker Carlson is the host of the show that apparently the President of the United States was watching. Tucker, when you heard uh, Donald Trump on Saturday night, and then you saw the media reaction where, what's he talking about? Doesn't he know there was right. no terror strike in Sweden? What'd you think? Well, I mean, the first point is obvious. Presidents ought to be precise in what they say. There should be no question about what their meaning is, and that applies to this president, too, for sure. On the other hand, it seems like we may be missing the point of the story, which is there has been a massive social cost associated with the refugee policies and the immigration policies of Western Europe. I was in Europe yesterday, and I can tell you what you already know from watching the news, which is there is a lot of social dislocation as a result of this. The crime rate in all these countries has risen, but so has the political turmoil. So, for example, in Sweden, the Sweden Democrats, which is a conservative party, which would have had no chance at all, would have been laughed right off the stage 20 years ago, is now the number two party in Sweden. So no one's tried harder, basically, to, in, to integrate uh, refugees and immigrants than Sweden. I mean, there's a deep reservoir of decency I should say, right. in that mm -hmm. country. They've really, really tried. But it's caused massive, massive turmoil. The same is true, obviously, in France. Marine Le Pen is likely to win the first mm -hmm. round of voting uh, in France as, the re as a result of their immigration policy. Germany, by the way, if you're worried about German nationalism, and I think all of us should be a little bit worried about a, a unified nationalist Germany, their refugee policies under Merkel are guaranteeing that. So... We're ignoring all this stuff. 50 years of immigration right. policy is coming to flower in Europe. We're not paying any attention. We're not drawing any of the obvious lessons from it. It's not working. That's the real point here. Absolutely. And no one can deny what's happening in Brussels, what's happening in That's France, right. and what's happening in Germany. And everyone, this is what drives Trump nuts. Everyone skips over that and says, well, wait a second, where's the proof of, uh, in Sweden? Is he just watching Fox News again? Well, I'm, Armie Horowitz did a documentary on it, and he was nearly killed over there, and he says the Sweden is in denial about the danger of the influx of refugees. Here he is with you. Well, in Sweden's own words, they consider themselves to be a humanitarian superpower. They feel that it's their moral duty to open their borders to all and any refugees that want to come to them. It's difficult to get jobs. There's too many of them. But they have tremendous benefits there, which is why so many of these migrants are going to Sweden to begin with. But there was an absolute surge in, in both gun violence and rape in Sweden once yes. they began this open-door policy. They know that this, this crime is happening. They can feel it. The statistics are clear. But they would refer to what is the root cause behind it and say, oh, it's just more, it happens to be more violence. It's men who are raping people, not the refugees. They'll make excuses for it. So you, they have these, and, and what, they, what they really become are no-go zones. These are areas that cops won't even enter because it's too dangerous for them. This is the policy of the National Police Authority in, in Sweden, that the government has gone out of its way to try to cover up some of these problems. Okay, so that is the clip that President right. Donald Trump saw, and he was talking about Sweden. You see, Sweden last night. That's what he was referring to, Tucker, and you've set that up perfectly. Meanwhile, mainstream media went crazy about it. Here's a snippet of that. 
European leaders, they're kind of baffled by President Donald Trump, and not just by his off-the-cuff remarks about Sweden that you mentioned, but also, and more important, by his confusing and contradictory foreign policy so far. He seemed to allude to a terror attack in Sweden, despite there being no such attack. Did he really put what he sees on TV over what he should be learning from intel briefings? Okay, so that summarizes perfectly. They missed the point. There's trouble in yeah. Sweden. I mean, look, again, the president ought to be precise in what he says. Indeed. There should be no confusion about what he means. That analysis, however, is so stupid that it's hard to believe it made it on television. <laughs> so again, just to state it really clearly, Europe has tried really, really hard. And you'll often hear people say, well, they just don't you know, try to integrate these refugees or immigrants. That's a lie. They tried really, really hard. They spent massive amounts of money. They've given up a lot in order to bring these people over into their countries. And it hasn't worked very well at all. And it's in the process of totally changing these ancient cultures into something different and much more volatile and much more threatening. So what are the lessons that we should draw from this? That's the conversation we need to right. have. And, uh, and, you know, good for Trump and good for anyone else who raises at least that question. Let's have an honest conversation right. about how you bring tons of people in and make them fully well, vested in your society. Well, if they can't do it, how are we going to do well, it? Well, Tucker, you were on this couch when, when Angela Merkel decides I'm going to open the ah. door to a million refugees. And if she was looked at the person leading the charge, had the biggest heart and the smartest mind, a cutting-edge leader, and now she's on her political heels and might be calling it quick in politics because of that, and she's changed her policies. Donald Trump criticized her early and was criticized for it. Now he ended up right. Look what's happened in France, sadly ended up right. Now, Sweden, you've enjoyed these last couple of days ridiculing right. our new president, right? Congratulations, you now have a microscope. We're going to take a look at what's really going on over there, because I see a list of a lot of things that are happening, and we're going to find out how the people of uh, Sweden feel about the influx of refugees. Have they meshed in, or are they suppressing some crime figures? Well, that's, I mean, of course they are. And look, all of this is a reaction to the Second World War, and everyone in Western Europe is terrified of European nationalism. And you can understand why, and we should be a little worried about it, too. If you don't want European nationalism, then you need to rethink how you're handling refugees and immigrants because it's causing European nationalism. And again, the, the elites in those countries and in ours are so cut off from what the citizens they purportedly right. represent think that they just don't care at all. And they're going to find mm -hmm. the backlash is bitter and bad and destabilizing. They're and, really and reckless. What, really do you reckless. Want to see, what do you want to see from the president this week with the new immigration order then, Tucker? I'd like to see, above all, the president and his staff explain clearly and calmly what it means for American citizens, what it means for citizens of other countries trying to come here, and, and more important, most important, right. why we're doing it. Right. Because, by the way, that has majority support in this country. Sure. Okay, he, if you explain it. Right. And Tucker, and speaking of explaining things, that's the job of the media to try to explain what's going on in the world. So but regardless stupid. of, you know, what the president was talking about, you knew that there was going to be a media freakout because, as he has talked about and as many, many have observed, the media have become like an opposition to whatever President Trump says. Right. It's just the way it's working these days. Look, it's fine not to, you know, they're offended by Trump. Okay, fine. But there are some core issues underneath all of this that, by the way, propelled Trump to the White House in the first mm -hmm. place. And those are worth discussing. The problem here is that nobody in Washington, in the press or the permanent political class, has just taken a weekend to think through how did this happen? Why did voters do this? You know, how did we get here? Maybe there are some forces underlying all of this that have nothing to do with Trump's personality that are really important right. to address. Among them would be the dramatic cultural change and economic change wrought by immigration. And they're just, they refuse to address that. Right. And, and they're going to pay for it, and, unfortunately. And right, when you talked about nationalism to expand it, I think I got your drift, is that this, the government's not protecting me. We're losing exactly. the shape of our society, but I'm going to protect myself. So if you can't provide security, I'm going to provide security, and that brings the national extendencies. Real quick, very few people know more Republicans than you do in Washington. Right. So is it true, do you think, that Donald Trump is not hiring people that were not loyal to him during the campaign? Or, and is it also true that some don't want to hop in to this case with some label of chaotic White House? Where, where's the truth there? Well, there's a lot of truth in the, in, the, in, the for, in the second one, that there are a lot of people who are hesitant to jump in because they think it is chaotic over there, and I, think, and I think it is, by the way. It's totally untrue that the Trump administration is not considering people who are disloyal. I mean, look at the people he's met with. You know, the, the, one of the first people he met with was Tulsi Gabbard, a left-wing Democrat from Hawaii. So he's brought a ton of people in who don't agree with him, and I think that, you know, I think he should. Um, 
but I also think there is the sense that you know that that things are volatile over there, and that makes it harder to hire people. Yeah, that is a problem. Surely, uh, because in the beginning days of every administration, there are always some fits and starts. Yeah, right. no doubt about Tucker, it. Tucker, don't take any offers. All right, you're just—we finally got <laughs> you a spot that you can do very well. In. <laughs> Why? Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thanks, Tucker. Great to see you. You're the best, Ainsley. Thank you, Tucker.